Today, America is faced with something very, very severe, and we have to wake up to all this. At the age of seven, when I became seven years old, you know the Abu Hamza, have you heard about the man called Abu Hamza? Abu Hamza was the teacher of, uh, you know, uh, bin Laden. He came to our mosque, and he was preaching in our mosque when I was a young boy. And he said, now you have the power of the Koran, you have to have the power of the gun. So the whole group, we went and joined the PLO. The first time in my life, as we went to join the PLO, it was the biggest playground I've ever seen in my life. I didn't have toys, we didn't have anything, but we had the love of Allah, the love of Islam, and to live and die for the sake of Allah. Now, when I went over there, I've seen monkey bars. Best monkey bars there is, very high. Climbing up ropes, flat walls, mud holes, all you want to be muddy, your mom could not tell you anything. And I'm going, wow. And there came a huge group of men. Their beards were down to here. Their hair was just bushy like this. You can hide, hide double bird in there. And these men, you can smell them from three miles away as warriors. And with this, the head of the warrior, you know, he said to me, he said, young man, do you want to be a warrior? I said, I am a warrior. What are you talking about? I was trained to be a warrior. He said, you could not be a warrior unless you know how to use the weapon. That day, I knelt down and I shot 30 bullets into the heaven, AK-47. My life was transformed. The gun, the steel on it, just captured my soul. It was the best toy I ever had. The smoke, the gunpowder, it was the oxygen that I needed to just smell. This is my childhood. What are the American children doing today? Who is in charge of who? Are they telling you how it is at home or are you telling them how it is at home? Is your boy talking about girls or your girls talking about boys? Or is it about genes and what so have you? Well, we had one thing, is to advance Islam. In that camp, we trained how to shoot mortars, how to shoot rockets, how to shoot RBGs, rocket-propelled launchers, how to shoot, you know, uh, katyushas, how to dig holes and put, you know, tank mines and car mines, how to destroy cars in the street, how to slit throat. We practice on watermelons all the way to the dogs, slitting throats, how to do it fast and quick. Seven years old. My seven years old, I went on my first mission to Israel. I went all the way to the Golan Heights with a bunch of other young men, and we went all the way from there uh, in under the tunnel, you know, from the Golan Heights to Israel, and we had knapsack on our back, and we delivered them to the shepherd. The shepherd snapped on the belly of the sheep, and they took them to Israel to kill Jews. When we came back home, we were hailed as heroes. I was... It was one of my glorious days when I was a Muslim. I thought, that's the biggest thing. My mom stood by the door and went, <laughs> Shout the victory. My son, the warrior of Islam, my dad danced on the street. That day I thought I was James Bond. I was going to free the world of Islam from the American and from the Jews. That's what I thought about. This is my world. I became a recruiter. I was recruiting other children. And now I was feared by the children. The children used to beat me up. Now they're scared of me because there's more of us. With this, this is how my childhood started. My second journey to Israel, we went all the way to the Golan Heights and we were going deeper uh, to deliver explosive and ammo, Mogorov guns, seven and nine millimeter. And as we were doing this that day, it was an ambush. And they just cut us to pieces. Uh, 155 millimeter bomb shell, I mean, bomb fell on us. Took my best, my best friend, Muhammad, that I recruited from next door, that I promised his mom I'll bring him back home alive. It went through his esophagus, severed his spinal cord, and Muhammad fell on, back, on, on his back. He didn't say a word. This is 
how we learn. This is my early life. That's what I woke up to. I was preparing for such time as this. Me and my colleagues in that past life, today they are the teachers, the penetrators, the day that they're doing all kind of things. I'm not <laughs> <clears throat> With this, this is my second mission. I carried Muhammad on my back and I ran all the way to the Golan height. I could not find the tunnels to manifest to the other side. That day, Muhammad, this, the guy that I'm supposed to save his life, saved my life. It started from there. Then from there, we went to civil war, from the civil war, you know, in Lebanon, killing Christians, infidels. And then from there, we went, I went to Israel one more time through Haifa with two Zodiac, you know, boats, surprising the Israelis from there to kill innocent Jew walking on the street just to make statement that we are penetrating the land. We were discovered and we, we, get, we, sh we were shut down. From there, I went and became a trainer in Libya under Muammar Gaddafi. We trained the RRA. We trained the South American uh, Sandinistian. We trained the communist. We trained under the Chinese uh, People Army, which is Red Army. We trained under the KGB. We were learning techniques. We were learning things that you guys have not thought about. You would never think about them. But all of them were preparing to kill. We've, we've been prepared to be a killer machine. And now we training these people to be a killer and graduating them and send them. There is a university out there under the PLO, under Muammar Gaddafi, which is training people just like you to be induced in their country for such time to rise up and do the work that they need to do. Then became assassin. I was killing from Russian KGB to whatever stood in our way. Then from there, we stole rockets, uh, heat-seeking missiles from Syria, killing the Syrian Ba'ath, which is a socialist, communist regime. Took them all the way to Tora Bora, and we fought. We taught the Mujahideen how to use them and shoot Russian rockets the country that was helping us. We had no friends. Our friends, our loyalty is to Islam, to Allah. You can help me today all you want. You can give me anything you want as America, but to, tomorrow you're my enemy. Today you're my friend. This is what we learned. In, in, in the Muslim world, there's a doctrine called Al-Taqiyya. Everybody should write that down. A-L-T-A-Q-U-I-A-H, Al-Taqiyya. It's a doctrine. This doctrine teaches every Muslim to lie for the sake of Islam with a smile. They swore to Allah, they swore to everything, and they will tell you everything, this is how it's, it's working. But the truth is, they can lie for any reason to advance Islam. In Islam, there's small lies and big lies. There's black lies and there's white lies. You know, they don't, they don't have like what Christianity does. Christianity, you lie, you lie. There's none in between. Even when you lie for good reason, it's a lie still. You could not deceive or manipulate. So with this, we were learning how to manipulate the system. When we trained with the PLO, we were training. Everybody is when you start taking fire. That's when you put the women and the children and you fire from behind them. You just like from Foxhole, and you fight, and when they shoot the women and children, they're killing our women and children. Here's pictures. We were shooting from hospitals. The top of the hospital, we're shooting our uh, Mogorov, uh, we're shooting our uh, Katyushas, and we're shooting our mortars right there. So when the Israeli fought back and hit the hospitals because we were there, the Israeli are destroying hospitals. These all techniques for propaganda we were learning from our childhood to be evil.